Johor Bahru, Malaysia has got to be one of the most prominent spots in Southeast Asia for delicious food with a short drive away from Singapore. Many Singaporeans head across the border for cheaper food, groceries and massages unperturbed by inconveniences of traffic jams. In today's vlog, you will explore a day trip with me to Johor Bahru which you get to experience and see what to do over there. Stay tuned and subscribe for more delicious content. Now watch till the end to see the magic Johor Bahru brings you. Good morning. We are heading to Malaysia, Johor Bahru, and it's super early right now. I'm getting ready. See you guys in a while. So tired. I woke up extra early this morning to beat the jam and compensate for some lost time in traffic for the highly anticipated first meal of the day. After being locked for over two years due to COVID pandemic, crossing the border feels extra special and exciting. The traffic already took us more than an hour to arrive to Malaysia. There seems to be no more requirement to declare vaccination status as we weren't asked of that. But do your homework before you set off. The excitement was heightened with the congestion as we anticipated the first road trip ever since the start of pandemic till the borders are finally open for hungry Singaporeans to rush over for food and more. It was thus a very bearable wait. Arriving to Malaysia, we were soaking in the sights and the scenes that have gone unfamiliar with the pandemic lockdown. It's nice seeing the shop houses, roads and people on the streets. The first stop we headed to was 88 Coffee Shop. 88 Coffee Shop is also known as Junction 88, famous for the abalone rice noodles known as Bao Yu Guo Tiao Tang, which we gave it a miss because all of us wanted to have a variety of selections for our breakfast. First stop, steamed rice rolls, Ji Chong Fan. I got the prawn rice rolls, which cost about 6 ringgit, and that is approximately 2 Sing dollars. Order is done. Over here, he's adding the sweet sauce, the chili sauce, as well as the soya based sauce. The rice rolls were super slippery and smooth, which comes with six tiny strings. The chili sauce wasn't really spicy, but it adds a nice savory flavor to the chichong fat. I also ordered some braised rice noodles, which is similar to kuei chap in Singapore, which the noodles are flat and white instead of the thin narrow noodles served here. What I like about this is the herbal flavor of the soup, which is really warming for the stomach during breakfast. It's typically served with some braised innards, which I didn't opt for. Tofu, eggs, pork belly, and lean meat were some of its other options as well. Just take a look at the noodles here. I hope you're not drooling. This is my type of breakfast here. Rice noodles in piping hot herbal broth. You really get a good mix of carbohydrates, sodium, protein, all that you need at the start of your day. Your best breakfast bed would definitely be at a local coffee shop. There's so much to choose, you get variety and you can order more to share. Local fare at affordable rates with fresh hot food being served to you. Don't miss the Kopitiam experience. I got a dessert which is a fried pastry coated with sesame seeds, thin crust made with chewy glutinous rice and sugar that's hollow inside with red bean paste. 
a very nice crispy sweet treat to have. Next, we went to Hyakju, which is one of Johor Bahru's oldest and best known traditional bakery offering good, fresh, malt flavored breads and aromatic banana cakes. If you're here for their banana cake, like us, go earlier to queue even though the banana cakes will only be ready by noon. But the queue was so long when we arrived, so we decided to head to our next stop. You can hang out at their quaint little cafes nearby if you decide not to queue up. Their delicious banana cakes are also available on WeBuy as well, which is an e-commerce platform for Singaporeans who wants to get them. We went to KSL Mall after the failed banana cake trip in the hopes of buying other stuff and getting a retreat from the heat. What I wanted was an oat latte because have not had my caffeine fix for the day. Order an Americano and ice oat latte. They've got impressively sturdy straws here. It's so solid and of great quality for a disposable item, I suppose. It could be very much reusable or else remember to recycle after usage. After walking around aimlessly for a while, the best thing to do is actually getting a massage. We found this Thai massage shop at 88 Ringgit for an hour of full body massage. With nothing else to do, we headed in there. Thank you. Thank you. Massage ended with a delicious warm ginger tea. I felt pretty rejuvenated, but Thai massage was a little intense for me. I would prefer the normal massage. Now for lunch, we are at Kadai Bakut Teh Hin Hock, which is known for its Bakut Teh and signature poached fish. This is a very popular restaurant that boasts quite a crowd. So Bakut Teh is basically a pork rib dish cooked in broth filled with herbs and spices and this is predominantly a Malaysian and Singapore dish. With their signature poached fish, customers get to pick and choose the fish that we want as though we are in a fish market. Condiments with black soy sauce, chili and garlic is a must for Bakut Teh. So there's a store outside selling Moa Ota which is a fish cake made with ground fish mixed with spices wrapped in banana leaf and grilled. Dumplings and local honey are sold as well. Here are blanched and topped with some minced meat sauce. The tofu is also steamed and covered in some black bean minced meat sauce. The star of the show would be the Bagot Day, which is on the sweeter side. It's not peppery at all but herbal in taste. It feels like a nourishing soup with the tofu puffs, tofu sheets, and fresh pork ribs. Their poached fish does not reek any bit of fishiness, it's really fresh, sweet, and tender meats, also with the garlicky topping and gravy. The restaurant owner Ahok has been running this restaurant for over 30 years with his wife and is now assisted by his son. After lunch, we headed to a shopping mall called Meat Valley South Key. This is a glamorous massive mall with more than 300 retailers spread across 6 floors. From clothing to gadgets, international cuisine and local food. We spent some time aimlessly wandering about. There are many international brands here but we do not have anything in mind to shop for. I ended up at Toys R Us looking at toys. 
Next, we were headed to Aeon Mall Bukit Indah for more shopping and food. As I'm mostly interested in jazz food, I stayed at the ground level exploring seeing the newly popped out food stalls. We saw quite a crowd at the sushi place, so we decided to get some and try them as well. There is a good variety and they look pretty appetizing. We got 10 pieces of sushi and 4 mochi balls which cost 33 ringgit which is about $10.42 sing dollars. We got a spicy ebi tempura sushi, a taco ball sushi and we tried this another whole ebi tempura sushi and some cute little mochi balls. The mochi skin is not very chewy. It's more sticky than chewy. It tastes quite dense and that includes the filling as well. It looks really rich. And it's hot. It's not as soft as I wanted it to be. Mm, I'll give this a pass. I got a couple more snacks. Here are some tea eggs which is braised in herbs as well. It's about dinner so we went to a popular seafood restaurant nearby called Kadai Makanan Kuksang. Live seafood restaurants are very common here. They have both El Fresco seating area and the air conditioned seatings available. Outside the restaurant, there is also an awesome looking satay stall. Here, they are grilling some chicken, mutton, and beef satays with the refreshing cucumber condiments and the satay sauce. This is a very quintessential Malaysian street food you have to try. I was looking at the live fishes and seafood. The fishes are massive and they look kind of ferocious. Here, you can choose the seafood you want and get the chef to prepare it the way you like it. We ordered a number of dishes. For carbs, we got some hor fun which has this thick starchy gravy over wok fried rice noodles with some meat and seafood in there. We got this e min which are stir fried Cantonese egg noodles, super delicious. And this is a honey beer coated spare ribs with really fall off the bone tender meat. The clams here are huge, very sweet and umami in taste without the need for complicated seasonings. Of course, the star of the show will be the salt baked Sri Lankan crabs which are so fresh and meaty. So that basically sums up my fruitful, food-filled road trip that I haven't had in such a long time. If you stayed till this point, I really appreciate you watching till the end. Do like, comment and subscribe for more food vlogs coming your way. Follow Comfort Chomper on Instagram for more updates. I will bring you to more places soon and see you on my next video. Thank you so much for watching.